Do you have cat scratch fever? Well, I'm tuning my guitar and I'm about to sing it, so just stand by. Um, Ted Nugent, the I think he penned Cat Scratch Fever. It was certainly a big hit for him. <laughs> and it came out, said some not so nice things about Barack Obama and some of the peop other people in the, Barack and, uh, the uh, Obama administration and a lot of people in the media and certainly folks in the Democratic Party are making a big deal about this. Is this just politics as usual in Washington? I don't know. I mean, it's the, it shows, if nothing else, the perils of embracing a really uh, unreliable type figure and, and thinking that that would be a cool part of your campaign. I mean, when, you know, Ted Nugent came out uh, a few weeks ago and endorsed Mitt Romney, Mitt Romney's son, Tag, you know, sent out a tweet saying, isn't this cool? Wow, Ted Nugent has come to our side. And, you know, it was at a time when Mitt Romney wanted the imprimatur of some kind of cool Michigan Detroit rocker types. He had Kid Rock on stage with him and so they kind of you know embraced a little bit and then Ted Nugent goes out and says some truly wacky wild things at the NRA convention uh, a few days back and they've exploded all over the web and the Democrats have jumped all over it. Right but am I drawing too fine a distinction between say somebody like Hillary Rosen who um, visited the White House, whatever, several dozen times and is uh, a partner with Hillary, uh, uh, Anita Dunn, in a Democratic lobbying uh, organization, and Ted Nugent, who's kind of his own guy, doing his own thing? Well, I mean, are these uh, statements even remotely equivalent? I mean, Hillary Rosen said uh, Ann Romney had never really had a, a full-time job or never worked a day in her life. Ted Nugent said that if Barack Obama is re-elected in November, he will either be dead, or, that is Ted Nugent, or in jail at this time next year, which is to indicate that evidently he would be willing to try to go after Obama or something. It was hard to know what he was saying, but it was serious enough that the Secret Service is now going to visit with him tomorrow to get him to clarify what he was talking about. Right. Neil, talk a little bit about the current media environment that the, these campaigns operate in where you have Twitter and uh, blogosphere and everything's 24-7. I mean, it, is it in the electorate's interest that these stories, whether it's Hillary Rosen or Ted Nugent, become larger than life? I could see why it's in the interest of both political campaigns. I could see it's why it's in the interest of media, that especially on a day like today, where it's a slow news day, is looking for stories out there to push. Is it in the public's interest? Is it in the electorate's interest that the media, in effect, plays up these stories? I think it clearly isn't. I mean, it is an extraordinary thing. Twitter itself, among many other media now that can amplify these things. And, you know, we've always for you know quite a while talked about the echo chamber, but there are now so many chambers within chambers that just echo these things. And it's always very hard as a person sitting here in Washington or, you know, I'm sure for these campaign operatives in Chicago or wherever to know, you know, is it is this echoing in the places that really matter, which is outside of people who sit in front of computers all day long and watch goofy videos and tweet things and email things. And I'd say that's the preponderance of the U.S. population is not engaging in that part of the conversation, perhaps rightfully so. So we consume a lot of oxygen with these you know, s silly statements that various people who are themselves are very peripheral to anything are making and then we act as if it's like at the core of the debate when it clearly isn't. 